Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to create and read a new text file. So we're going to learn how to use Python scripting for automation to create a new text file and then to read its contents. Our first step is going to be to open a new file. This can be any text file that we want, whether it exists or not. Let's call this new text file.txt. Then we're going to pass in an argument w to the open function, which means that we're opening the file in write mode, which means we're opening it so that we can edit it. Then let's save a reference to the file by calling this our open file. So now we have a variable we can use to reference the file. We can print out the open file dot mode to verify the mode that we're in. So let's run this code cell and then check out our results. So we get a W returned, which is the W we passed in, which verifies that we are indeed inside of write mode. Next, let's check if the open file is readable. So I'm going to print open file dot readable. It's false because we set it to be in write mode. Let's check if the open file is writable with open file dot writable and run the code cell. Let's see here, just make sure that you spell writable without the E. So just writable with an A and you get the message true because we did open the file in write mode. Then we can close our open file by having the close function. So this way we know how we can create a new file. It will be created under our files and called new text file.txt and we can verify the mode that we're in. Then you want to close the file when you're done with it. Next up, let's go ahead and open this file and let's actually give it some content. So we can call open and then before we close it, we can call here open file dot write lines and pass in some kind of line. In here you have to pass in a list because we're using the write lines function. So it accepts a list such as this is my first line. Then we can call open file dot close when we're done writing. Then how do we check that the line was actually added to the file? Well, we are going to open the file again so we are going to call open file equals open and then passing in the name of our file, which is new text file dot txt. So we're going to pass in the file name to open and this time we're opening it in read mode. So if you want to edit the content in the file, you have to open it in write mode. Otherwise you have to open it in read mode. Then we can get the contents of the file by calling open file dot read and then we can call open file dot close when we're done. Then we can print out the contents at the end. Okay, so if you get a message that there's a closed file, it just means you have to run all of your code cells again, because if you run one code cell, then that will execute its code. And if you maybe delete that line like we did and then write new code, well, that previous code cell will still run. So you can just run all your cells from the start. Then you should see this is my first line, which verifies that we've been able to add a line into our text, text file. Other than writing multiple lines, we can also write one line at a time. We can grab the open file and just use the write function to write one line. And we can pass in a message here like this is a second line. Then let's go ahead and run all of our code cells again. And look at that, we get this is my first line followed by this is my second line. Note that by default, all the lines will be added 
one after the other without any space at the end or without any line breaks. But if you want, you can add a line break with the backslash n. Then if I run my cells again, this time that backslash n, it gets converted into a line break. Now what if you wanted to add multiple lines at once with right lines? In that case, I'm going to create a list of lines and define that. I'll put in some content here like hello, as well as hi there. So now we have a list of two sentences that we can call open file dot write lines and we can pass in the list of lines. Then we can run all of our code cells again and you just have to make sure that if you're passing in a list of lines it's already an array so don't pass it in as an array again. And now you'll see hello and hi there will be added to our content. And again, if you want, you can add a backslash n at the end of each one if you want them to be all on a new line. In that case, you'd have to add a backslash n to every sentence where you wanted to have a line break. You can also use the write lines function directly. So I can call open file dot write lines and I can pass in here a list with multiple strings right here, such as goodbye followed by a line break, and then by again. So in this case, I'm just passing in the array of multiple sentences directly. Just be careful with the capitalization. Make sure that right lines is all lowercase. Then you can run all your code cells and look at that. This time we get all of our lines being added. So this verifies that we've been able to write content to our file. And then we were able to also read the contents of that file. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to read and write a text file with a loop. So we'll use Python to read a text file and also to write content into a text file. First, let's go ahead and create some lines that we want to put into our text file. So I'm going to create a variable called my lines and I'm going to initialize an array. Here I'm going to put in a list of strings for each sentence in my text file. I can put something like good morning as one string and add a period and I can say welcome to this file as another string and I can add a third string that says this is the end of this part. Okay so now we have an array I'm then going to call the open function and I'm going to open up a new text file and I'm going to call this myfile.txt. Notice that you have to put this into a string so you have to put it into quotation marks. So I'm just going to wrap the name of the file including the extension in double quotation marks. Then we're going to use the a flag and we're going to save this as our open file. Then we're going to loop through each of our lines in my lines and for each line we're going to take the open file and we're going to call its write function. We're going to write the line into the file. Then we can call open file dot close to close that file. Alright then I'm going to run this cell and it's going to create for me under my files a new file called myfile.txt. Just have to open and close the files of it for it to appear. So you can download this file and you can see its contents or you can actually see the contents via code. So to read the text file we're going to open the file again so I'm going to call open file and I'm going to use the open function and I'm opening my file.txt but I have to open it again because this time we're going to open it in read mode. That means we're specifically opening it for reading. Then I'm going to grab the open file and call its read function and I'm going to save this as the file contents. Then I'm going to call openfile.close and I'm going to print out the file contents. I'm going to run this code cell and look at that. We can see good morning, welcome to this file. This is the end of this part. So we can see the contents of the text file. 
And we can see that each line from the array was added to the file and there was no line break in between. So the content was just added one after the other. If you want, you can add a line break via the loop just by adding in a string that contains the backslash n symbol. Then you have to run all your cells again. And this time we're going to have good morning, welcome to this file, this is the end of this part. Then we have it all over again, but with some line breaks because we took our original file and we added more content to it. If you want to reset the file, well, you can clear it or you can go to runtime and then you can factory reset your runtime, which is going to remove your text files from files and then you can just run all your cells again. This is going to just delete this text file and create it again from scratch because the text file that's created, it's here temporary. So if you want it permanent, you have to download it. Otherwise, it exists under files as a temporary file, which is going to get erased anytime you restart the runtime. So now that we've restarted the runtime and ran all our cells again, this time we actually have a line break in between each line. So we were able to write content into the text file and also we were able to read content from the file. Let's take a look at an alternative option to reading the contents. So I'm going to call open file again and use the open function. Then I'm going to print out my open file dot read line. So this time I'm just reading one line and be careful about the casing here. Read line should be all lowercase. Then I'm going to call open file dot close. This time it's going to just tell me the first line of the file. I could add another print statement to print out two lines or a third one to print out all three lines or a fourth one but that's just going to print out an empty line. So that is how you can read a text file in another option. Let's take a look at one more loop that we can use for reading the text file. So again, we have to open the text file. Then I'm going to call open file dot read lines plural this time. And I'm going to save this in a variable all lines. Then I'm going to call open file dot close and I'm going to loop for each of my lines inside of a range like three. I'm going to print out the all lines at the current line index. I'm going to run this cell and this time we get all three lines printed out. Here we're using the range function to loop through and the range will always begin by default at zero and will end at the maximum excluded. So it'll go from zero to one to two, and then it will stop because this range is exclusive. So if I change this to four, well now it's going to tell me that there's a list index out of range because all lines, it only has three items in it. And if I change this to two, it's only going to print out the first two lines because it's only going to go to index 0 and then index 1 because this maximum is exclusive. It's excluded in the range. And index counting begins at 0. So we go to line 0, then we go to line 1, then we go to line 2, and we stop because the maximum is 3. All right, so that is how you can read and write to a text file with Python. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture we are going to learn how to copy the contents of a file with Python. So we're going to create an original file variable and put in a path like slash content slash original dot txt. This doesn't have to already exist. In my files here I don't have to have my original dot txt file in there. But you could upload one or you could just create one via code. Now how do I know this is the path? Well because you can click on the three dots to the side of the folder in your files and you can copy the path and you'll see that the path to 
an item inside of files is located in slash content here on Google Colab. So I'm going to use original.txt as my original file and I want it to have some data because I want to then copy the data. So I'm going to open up the file and I'm going to call this original.txt. I'll open it in write mode and I'm going to save this as my open file. Then I'm going to put some content in there. So I'm going to add some lines, could be just one line, into this file. So I'm going to call open file dot write and then I can pass in a line. This is the original line. Then I'm going to close the file by calling open file dot close. And then you can run this code cell and you'll have original.txt now in your content. So now we're going to take that file and we're going to copy it over. So I'm going to create a destination file and specify the path slash content slash destination.txt. It doesn't have to already exist. Then I'm going to copy the content from the original file. So I'm going to call open and I'm opening up my original file and that specifies the location of the file I'm going to open and I'm going to open it in read mode. Next up we're going to save that file that's opened as the open file and I'm going to take the content of it by grabbing the open file and reading it. Then I'm going to take the open file and I'm going to close it. So now we're going to have the content stored which means then we can copy that content over. So I'm going to open up my destination file. My open file is now going to be the destination file and I'm going to open it in write mode this time because I'm going to write content to it. So I'll take the open file and I'm going to write into it my content that was copied. Then I'm going to close the open file. I can run this code cell and this time you'll have destination.txt appear in your files. Then we can verify that we did the job properly by opening our destination file, but then we're going to open it in read mode this time, so just reading the data. We're going to grab the data by taking the open file and calling the read function. Then we can print out the data and we can close the open file. I'll run this code cell and we get the original line. So this tells me that we've been able to copy over our line from our original file into our destination file. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we are going to learn how to print the contents of a CSV file via Python. So join me in Google Colab and in a new code cell. The first thing we're going to do is connect to our Google Drive where we have a CSV file uploaded. So we're going to import from google.colab the drive library. The drive module allows us to connect to files on Google Drive. We have to call drive.mount and pass in slash content slash g drive, which is where the Google Drive folder exists relative to this Colab file. And if you run this code cell, you'll be taken through a series of prompts to permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files. So hit connect to Google Drive and go through the prompts. Make sure that you connect to the Google Drive account where this Colab notebook exists. So you should be using the same account for Google Colab as you are using for Google Drive. Next up, we're going to import the CSV library, which we're going to use to interact with our CSV file. Let's then put the path to our file and it's going to be at slash content slash g drive slash my drive, which is a reference to your Google Drive. Then you have to put in the name of the file and its extension. If it's in a folder, you have to, of course, put the folder name first. 
So mine is not in a folder, it's just on my Google Drive, and it's called stockprices.csv. And we'll include this file in the source files if you want to experiment with this CSV file. Then we're going to call the open function and pass in the path to our file. And we're going to open the file in read mode. So you can use single or double quotes for all of this. Then let's save that as our open file. Then we're going to use the CSV library and use its reader function which allows us to take a file and read its contents. You have to pass in a delimiter. In this case, it's a comma. The delimiter means how are you separating the different values in the CSV file. This could be a comma or it could be a vertical line. Those are two commonly used delimiters. In this case, for my CSV file, my delimiter is a comma. And you can see the delimiter just by opening up the CSV file and seeing what symbol is used to separate values. It could be a space. We're going to save this as the content of the file. Then we can print out the content. So we're going to loop through each line in the content and I'm going to print the line. Then I'm going to call openfile.close to close that file. And here are my results. First, I see Drive already mounted because I've already connected to Google Drive. Then I see four lines printed out. These lines correspond directly to the rows in my CSV file. We have our first row, which had our header, course name, course ID, and category. Our second row contains our first entry. Hello Coding with the course ID 1231, the category coding. Then we have our second line, which is our second row in the CSV file, containing the course name Unreal Engine 5 Masterclass, a course ID, and the category, and a third row. And each of these values in the CSV file is separated by a comma, but here in Python, the CSV reader is going to take the content and format each line into a list. So this is how you can print the contents of a CSV file with Python. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we are going to learn how to print the contents of a CSV file with Python using a list. First, we're going to connect to Google Drive where we have our CSV file uploaded. Another option is just to upload the file into your files, but this is temporary storage, which will be refreshed whenever the runtime is disconnected. So if you leave or close the page and come back, the files will be refreshed. So you can use Google Drive for more permanent storage. So from google.colab, we're going to import the drive module and call it drive.mount. We're mounting to content slash g drive, which is the link to connect to your Google Drive relative to this collab. Then go through the steps to permit the notebook to access your Google Drive files. Great, once you have done that, you can come back to the notebook and we are going to make a reference to the file path. It's going to be at slash content slash g drive slash my drive, which means any of the folders or files in your Google Drive. And the file is called stockprices.csv. Then I am going to call the open function on my file path and I'm going to open the file in read mode and I'm going to save this as my CSV file. Then I'm going to import the CSV module or library which will allow me to work with CSV files in Python. I'm going to call the CSV library's reader function and pass in the file that I want to read followed by the delimiter which is going to be a comma for this CSV file. And we'll save the results as the content of the CSV file. Then we can print a list of that content. And we can call close on the CSV file. I'll run the code cell and as a result we get a list returned. Each line or row in the CSV file is a list inside of the overall list. So we have a two-dimensional list here, also commonly called a two-dimensional array. 
So we get our results printed out. So this time, instead of looping through each line in the CSV file, we're just printing all of the lines as a list. So we have a two-dimensional list as the result, which means a list containing lists where each sub list is a row in the CSV file. And that is how you can print a CSV file's contents with Python as a list. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to use Python to create a new CSV file. So join me in Google Colab and we'll get started. First, we are going to specify the name of the new file that we want to create. So I'm going to make a variable called created file and I'm going to put it into slash content and I'm, I'll call it new underscore CSV dot CSV. This slash content is just referring to the files of Google Colab. Then I'm going to call the open function to open the created file in write mode. So we specify a W and a new line will use just an empty string. I'm going to save this as my open file. Then I'm going to import the CSV library and I'm going to call csv.writer. I'm going to write to the open file using a delimiter of a comma. Then I'm going to save this as my CSV writer variable. Then let's create some data to put into the CSV file. We use a list and inside of that, each sub list represents a row. So first we can have here the header that says product and you can use single or double quotes by the way, it doesn't matter. Product and let's call this product name followed by the price and the category. So that represents one row. You can have another row that says hello coding, a price as well. This could be a value and then a category like coding. Then we can have another product name like Python for finance followed by a price and a category finance. So now we have three rows with one header at the top. In order to put the data into the CSV file, we're going to grab our CSV writer and use the function write rows passing in our data. Then we can grab the open file and close it. So that is going to create our CSV file and you can see it appear in your files. You can just download it or you can check out its contents via Python. First you have to open the file and that will be our created file variable. So it's going to be the location to that created file. This time we're opening the file in read mode, not write mode. Then I'm going to grab the content by using csv.reader and to read the open file. The delimiter in the file is a comma. Then we can print out a list of the content and then we can close the open file. And here are our results. We get all three of our values with each value being a row. So we get all three rows represented in the list format. And that is how you can create a CSV file with Python. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.